Welcome back to Cardades.org. Today we're going to be continuing our series on varieties of voting systems. In this video we will be looking at dictatorship. One man, one vote. Now, arguably this is going to be the simplest voting system, and it's a dictatorship. A dictatorship simply takes the preferences of a particular individual and sets those as the society's preferences. This may seem amusing to you as a voting method, but arguably it's historically probably the most common voting method there is. Whoever the dictator wants to win does, plain and simple. So take a look at these ballots. A through G are voters, H through K are candidates, and D is the dictator. Every single other voting system that we have looked at will pick K as the winner, by far, but not dictatorship. Since D is the dictator, his preferences are the only ones that matter, and J wins. It's interesting to note that every single other system will also rank J as last, and yet dictatorship will rank it as first. Is it a democratic voting system? Probably not. But is it a common one? It seems to me. Once again, assume D is the dictator. Therefore, though he loses in all the other voting systems, Johnson, in fact, wins here. So, first past the post had Clinton tying with Trump. Instant runoff voting had Clinton winning. Coombs rule had Stein winning. The board account had Stein winning. Naru's Board account had Trump winning, Buckland voting left Stein as the winner, as well as the Condorcet method, and dictatorship had Johnson winning. The wild thing that we should look at here is that we have five different results, not with changing the votes, but changing the method that we use to count them. Depending on the method, we can get all of these different candidates and a tie as possible victors. In our political example, we've gotten five different results depending on the system that we used, and every single candidate wins at least one voting method. That's wild. Clearly, the dictatorship is probably not democratic, but how can we otherwise decide between our voting systems? Well, we're going to use what's known as desirability criteria. If you want more information on those desirability criteria, keep watching. The series continues tomorrow and on for a whole other week with Making Voting More Democratic, where we will look at a set of voting criteria for these voting systems. After that, we'll look at May's Theorem, Arrow's Impossibility Theorem, and finally, ways to avoid Arrow's Impossibility and maybe even solve the problem of the third party. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.